you know, cassex sales, crack sales, um, a whole host of other things, sales, gun sales, you know, all these things fly off the shelf in any marketplace. But it's like real for for me to have a voice and for me to build up my platform, my platform being me, you know, another great Jay Z line, you know, and that's another one of my artists that I, I've learned from. Another great Jay Z line is, you know, um and what did he say? He said, uh, uh, it's just long, it just slipped my mind. It'll come back to me. But um, when, when it comes down to when it comes down to this platform of myself having a voice and being able to use my voice as a message to to get across a message or a lesson that may not have been, nobody stood up and said it or nobody had the preconceived notion or the epiphany to stand up and actually speak these things out into the world. Not only speak them, but make a video and put money behind it and take their time to go out and perform it and promote it as if it was a track that they wanted to play in a booty club. Like, that's really, that's really my platform right there. And um, if you if you have one of the songs I sent in, the Greenwood District, I think that one was sent in, um, that, that really pretty much explains, like, it explains because it's, it's, it's basically a history lesson. I mean, it's a long history lesson about something that we wasn't that that we just was never taught, you know. So it's it's like it's like I'm I'm here to be I'm here to be people's friends. I'm here to laugh with people. I'm here to make people dance. I'm here to do all that shit. But I'm also here. I feel like I got this gift to teach. You know what I'm saying? Because what whatever words I decide to put down on this paper, I can make them work. You know what I'm saying? So if I decide to put words that mean something, shit, it's gonna work out. If somebody gonna hear it the right people who need to hear it. You know what I'm saying? They're going to hear it and they're going to take it for what it's worth. And the people who don't understand it, they they just want to make it. That's really what I mean by my platform. I'm sorry to go off on a, um, on a rant about it. Oh, no, you're good. You, you Apparently, you've never listened to the show um, when we had those guests <laughs> up here who take the hell over and they forget. I mean, I, I, I asked Rich, I'd be like, what the hell was the question? Because you know, mm-hmm. you know, but, but yeah. that's, you know, that's what we're here for, you know, for the people to be able to yeah. express whatever it is that they're passionate about. And um, so I'm just sitting back, you know, soaking it all in. But what would you say is the biggest misconception that you feel people have about your genre of music? Um, that is that is ignorant. I feel like I feel like that is the worst preconceived notion that somebody could make about hip hop is that it's ignorant. Like you it's like it's like looking at um looking at something like a like a television show, you know, looking at a television show that may have once been um may have once been good, then they get a new director or some shit or a new leading actor playing mm-hmm. the same role or actress or some shit. And it's like damn I don't you know what I'm saying like the show ain't good no more. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it ain't it ain't really the show, you feel me? Like it's the motherfuckers behind the scenes. Like it's the it's no. the casting, like you, you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's one of the things I hate. Like and I, I, I don't even tell people to be honest with you, I go about my days and I don't really tell people I do music until it comes to that, you know what I'm saying, until the conversation comes about because you do get looked at like, Oh, look at this look at this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like look at this another yeah. nigga out here trying to do music. Like, nah, I've been doing this since 10 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody was standing up saying what they wanted to be. I stood up and said I was a rapper. I was going to be a rapper. You know what I'm saying? I stuck to it. So I don't have I, I don't I don't have any reason to want to tell somebody that I do music unless they come across it while I'm at a show. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm there for. But, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how I feel about that. So talk about uh, the Greenwood District. You mentioned it briefly. I'm about to go into that right now. But um, sure. how did that song come about? Okay, so the Greenwood District was um, it was it was a song that just it came about in like the craziest way. I sit a lot of places. Sometimes I sit to a desk. Um, sometimes I sit in my studio. Sometimes I sit in the car. Sometimes I'm riding down the street and I write music. You know what I'm saying? It might not be the safest. I don't advise anybody driving and writing music. You know what I'm saying? But this is just sometimes how I get my inspiration. So um, 
the Greenwood District, I have been um, doing writing sessions all day. Doing my writing sessions all day. Um, went to my went to go get in my bed from my home studio, and uh, had my headphones still plugged in, laid down, and then that beat just came on. It just came on with the sample that don't you say nothing. Hold on, I'm coming. That sample hit, and I was like, okay. I was just listening to it, and the, the sample sound like, like, I can't bullshit you. The sample, to me, I equated hearing the shit to, like, God mm, coming down mm. in a chariot or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, in my mind, when I heard it, like, it, it sounds so beautiful to me that it was, like, wow. I got up, grabbed my, um, my cigarettes, <laughs> my lighter. You know what I'm saying? I, I went back out. I went I went back out into the lab and was like, you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me sit down and see what I can do with this. And then the Black Wall Street shit just came about. It was a subject that I had um I had came across on YouTube and it had interested me. It sparked my interest, you know, searching through different videos and Facebook posts. You come across a lot of material, especially if you're following the right avenues, you know. Or the, the right people in the conscious community, you come across a lot of good information. And it was one of those days I came across some good information. And um, long story short, the, hearing about the song, I mean, hearing, hearing about the incident of 1921, the Tulsa riots, not really mm-hmm. riots or massacre, but I'm going to say riots because that's the legal term for it, the Tulsa riots. Right. And hearing about the 300 plus bodies put in unmarked graves and the zero reparations paid and the zero arrests made on the Caucasian side, you know what I'm saying, of the riots. But the the total decimation of the entire Greenwood district, which was the Black Wall Street, where they had about two movie theaters, they had a whole bunch of businesses, you know, pretty much anything you could think of. Like if, if, you, if you walk outside your city, go downtown, all those businesses, look at all those businesses on whatever strip in whatever city you live on, and they're all black faces that own them. You know what I'm saying? Movie theaters, grocery yeah. stores, car lots. Like that's that's what they had in 1921, you feel me? Jealousy, it, it brewed. You know what I'm saying? The jealousy brewed from it. And, um, you know, I want people to do their own research. I don't want to give too much of it away. But um, that what I what I found from doing my own research, it was it was just like fuck. I gotta tell this shit. I gotta say this shit to somebody, man. And writing the song wasn't hard at all. It actually felt like I had assistance. Like I don't know what anybody believed in. I ain't here to preach to nobody, but mm-hmm. you know, it just felt like I had assistance when writing the song because the universe knew my intent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It wasn't to be mm-hmm. a, a flashy nigga talking about gold chains on this beat. It was to really get across the message. And I feel wholeheartedly that I did so. So, the Greenwood District Royal Diamond on all major streaming platforms. Go get it. Go get your lesson. Get that work. But I'm going to give it to you right here, right now, on Indie Fire. That's what's up. That's what's up. Black Wall Street, my black balls gon' make them black ball me. I'm back dog and dog, I'm back off the leash. You can destroy it all, but it's still all came from me. 300 like the Spartans, men, women, and children caucus. Causes is unspoken, they never really that talkative. History forgets. But history repeats, now my dick rolling in they white daughters, revenge is sweet. Allegation against my brother is allegation against me. We used to die over our brothers, now we just pressing red buttons. See the fancy cars and business we had jumping. Not out the band though, the real estate turned into money. The jealousy turned into hate, the hate turned into bloody. We had it like the Spartans, men, women, and children caucus. Them babies just went to bed, they didn't care, they came and busted. My nigga wet is the justice, them niggas is doing. 25 for nothing or 25 for a nugget Cause they said that in one night you could make 2,500 Cause shelters like clothes, rice, and peppers cost money 60 years later you had crack out in the 80s And we know just who the target's trying to finish what you started on Black Wall Street My black balls gon' make them black ball me I'm back dog and dog, I'm back off the leash You can destroy it all but it still all came from me Black Wall Street my black balls gon' make them black ball me. Uh, I'm back dog and dog, I'm back off the leash. That you can conquer it all, but yeah. it still all belong to me. Never trust to keep my hand on my piece. You either stay.
there for something or you fall for anything At railroads, hard to fight off fire power they bring Like only if I had a superpower If only God would just come down and stop all of the killing Hear the children as they prayed The gunshots that got sprayed The fires that they set ablaze To think those villains got away To think that shit went on for days And when those bombs dropped from those planes You gotta ask who's really to blame You gotta ask who's feeling ashamed Cause I see no apologies, reparations Just a culture rape, robbed and pillaged for generations How can we coincide when on your side There's no consideration, face it Just slow decapitation, waiting for it to blow up in their face Patience, 300 like the Spartans Men, women, and children carcass Use the flow to inform us The rest those niggas in farmers Slay rest those souls in no boxes I mark the graves and just walk away Guess that's part of the game When you fear the God power But you can't kill our God power We gon' rebuild it all back up Let it run Black Wall Street. Yeah. Black Wall Street. My black balls gon' make them black ball me. I'm black dog and dog, I'm back off the leash. You can conquer it all, but it still all belong to me. Woo. Yeah, then they repeated that again in Oklahoma. Yeah, shit crazy, right? To repeat to itself, you know what I'm saying? Crazy. They repeat it again yeah. in Oklahoma. Uh, the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, may I interject here for a moment? By all means. Hey, um, earlier she had um, asked you um, basically what platform, and I think the better term would be what cause, if any, um, you stand on. Um, that's one of the things I was interested in as I listened to your music, of course. It answers itself, but I'd like for you to articulate exactly what it is that, that the cause that you're promoting, not only in your music, but even outside the, you know, the entertainment arena, you as a person, what are some of the causes or cause that, that uh, are heartfelt for you? Um, the, the, the main cause for me right now, the, the shit that I'm on for my life and preferably all the lives around me, within the, the exact radius close to me. It's just, just mastery of self. That's one thing that, that I'm very, very passionate about, and I speak to everybody, uh, everybody about mastery of themselves and their mental health. I feel like I feel like if you master yourself, if you're able to master your mind, and while our chains are off, anything can be done. But if I see the power of creating a vision in your mind, and then implementing that vision and turning it into something physical. You know what I'm saying? I, I've seen the power in doing that and it's 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 almost um it's almost phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? It's almost a phenomenon, you know, the way the way it feels once you get deep enough into it to where you, you really start to master yourself and you really start to know yourself. You know what I'm saying? So that that that's the main thing that I'm pushing right now for me and everybody around me, man. I tell my kids straight up, like, can't can is not a part of your vocabulary. Know yourself. You can do anything you put your mind to. You know what I'm saying? And they recite it verbatim to me, and I make sure that they know that and they feel that. You know what I'm saying? Because as young black women, that's something that they have to have on their side off rip. There's right, no question right. about that. They have to man, master themselves, know themselves. Yeah, success comes in cans and failure comes in cans. You're so right. Um, yeah, that, and and so you do have you do have children. Yes, yes, most definitely. Okay. I got three beautiful girls. You got how many? Three beautiful girls. Oh, their ages? The ages of five. Oh man, oh you got yeah. some you got some minds to be molded, and then you're gonna need some big shotguns too. <laughs> the three girls. Yeah, exactly. That's good. Well, got, I got the shotguns. I just got to mow the <laughs> Right, right. And God don't, give girls, God don't give girls to everyone. So it's got to be something real special about you. And yet, also, I think I can speak for Nakia. You said earlier how you felt like the song kind of, um, you were assisted in writing that. We believe in universe and the power of the universe and all those things that go with that. So, yeah. I feel you, man. I, I really do feel you. Yeah, and that's a very that's a very powerful song right there. And I'd love to, I appreciate to uh, hear the remix. Yeah, I'd love to hear the remix and maybe add a couple other people to it, like maybe Kendrick and some J. Cole. You know what I'm saying? They probably sure. love 